Hey monkeys, it's Jim from Small Time Outlaws bringing you the eighth video in my advanced programming in monkey tutorial series. In this video and the next one, I'm going to be giving you an introduction into reflection in monkey. Now, and so one thing you should know right off the bat here is that at the time of creating this video, the demo version of monkey doesn't support reflection at all. So if you're running the demo and you're not able to import the reflection module, it's likely that you have an older version. And so you'll either need to buy Monkey, which I highly recommend you do, or you'll need to find someone nice enough to give you the latest tra version of the Monkey Translator. Okay, so what reflection actually enables you to do is to access all of the aspects of the declarations you make in your code at runtime using the string representations of those declarations. So just let me show you kind of what I'm talking about here. So the first thing you'll do with reflection, and this is pretty important, is at the very start you're going to use this what's called the reflection filter preprocessor. Now you might not know much about preprocessors right now. I'm doing a video on it in a little while. Well, basically, you're just telling the translator to do something before it starts translating. So, what we're setting up here is the a filter that tells Monkey which modules you actually want to use in reflection. By default, it uses any module that your program accesses, and which can get kind of heavy. When I don't change this reflection filter from the default, I think my, the output JavaScript file goes from about 7k to almost 2 megabytes. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell it to only set up the main file we're working in for reflection. And to do that, you just use the name of the file that you, you're in and in this case, uh, mine's tutorial 8. So you just tutorial 8, and then a star, and that specifies. I'm not sure exactly what the star means. I think it means that you're just using one main file. Because if you want to do multiple modules, you could take that out and then you use the pipe character. And then you can say, oh, okay, I want to do the OS module and the well, I student module I made before. And that'll just do the, just those three and not everything your program references which by default is quite a bit. So I'm going to change this back to just the star. So now only the declarations I make in this file will be reflected. I guess that's the right word. And now the next thing we're going to do is actually import the reflection module. And so you can kind of see what this is all about. I'm just going to quickly set up a little global variable, call it test global, make it an int, and assign it to some random value now what we want to do is we want to get that value through reflection and one of the functions that comes with the reflection module is the get global function and what the get global function does is returns an object of the get of the global info type that contains all the information you need about this global declaration this global variable so what we'll do we're going to create a local variable and we're just going to call it test local and it's going to be of the global info type global info sign get global and then we're just going to access it using its the string value of its name which is test global and what's inside this global info object among other things is the name of this global variable the type that it is and this value so we can do something like we can print right off the bat, we can print test local, and then we want to access its type, and this returns a class info object. And then through there we can access the name of this class or this type, like so. So once we print, we should see int, right? Well not exactly. What we get is this monkey.boxes.int object. And the reason for this is that reflection doesn't really deal with these primitive types at all. It only deals in objects. So what happens when you get this global value, it's actually enclosed in an, in an int 
object. So the values in there, is, we can get to it. I'm going to show you how to get to it. Just know that it's enclosed in or boxed. That's why it's called the boxes module or boxed inside an object. So now what we want to do is actually get at the value that's inside this global global info object. And to do that, we need to go take it out of that int object through an unboxing process. And thankfully, the reflection module comes with a few unboxing functions such as unbox int, unbox float, and unbox string. So those are pretty nice and what those do is they just return the int float or string value that's stored in that global info object. So now what we want to do is determine which unbox function to use. And the easiest way to do that is to check that type name against a known string for that type, which we just saw. So we're going to get the type and we're going to compare it to, we're going to say if it's equal to monkey.boxes.int object, and we're going to use the unbox int function. And I'm just going to print it off so you can see that it works. Test local dot. And then what you're going to do from here is use the get value method. And once again, this doesn't return the actual int, it just returns the boxed whatever, boxed int, box float, box string inside that global info object. So you need to unbox it and we'll print it off. I'm going to close off this if, it, if statement, build it, and you can see it prints off 266. And then in that same fashion you can actually set, you can change this value using the set value, and then what you're going to pass it is not an int, you can't just send an int, but you can send a boxed int, and different value, 1, 2, 3, and I will actually set the value that's stored in there. So that's pretty nice, right? Well, I'm going to show you something even better, and that's working with functions. So now, let's create a function above our main function, and we're just going to call this something random. We're going to call reflect monkey, and just do a simple thing like print. We'll say hello, reflected monkey. And now we can get rid of this global stuff. We don't really need it anymore. And we're going to grab the function info of this reflect monkey function using the get function function. So we'll create our local function info object and assign it to get or assign get function to it. And it, the get function function takes two parameters. First is the string representation of the function name which is reflect monkey and the second is an array of class infos that tell monkey the types of variables that it has as parameters in case you need to specify a different reflect monkey function if you have more than one which I'm going to show you in a little bit but for now since we don't have any parameters in this function we can just use the empty array literal close that off and that'll give us our function and now I'm going to print off the function dot name and then I'm actually going to now call this function using the invoke method and the invoke method takes an array of objects that correspond with the types that are you'll be taking in but once again we're not taking we don't have any arguments here we don't have any parameters so we're just going to once again use the empty array literal and this will allow you to call this function hello reflected monkey and so if you haven't noticed by now reflections pretty awesome there's a you know a lot of possibilities you can do with, with what we've learned so far uh, you can do things like if you wanted to create a simple scripting language for your game you can call functions you know you parse your little script and you can call functions using just the string representation of that function or you know if you wanted to you can let the user specify which variables it wants to look at I don't know possibilities are endless right okay so now I'll click on so you can see what it looks like when you're trying to pass uh, parameters and arguments I should say to these functions I'm going to create another function called reflect monkey 
and I'm gonna overload it with like, just a couple random parameters. Say like that, like an int and a string. And this one's going to print it off some. I'm just gonna say reflect on this, and we're gonna just add our num. Whoa. Oops. Yeah, that's right. And our text, and end. And down here below the first func declaration, we're gonna create another func. Call it func two. A function info type. You just get function. And you notice it's the same name, but we're gonna pass in. The, an array that corresponds with the types of the parameters that this function takes. So in this case it, it takes an int and a string. Now we can't just use int and string because once again reflection doesn't deal in these primitive data types. So we're going to use a couple functions that come with the reflection module that are really nice. One's called int class and that basically just returns a, an empty class info object of the integer type and then in the same fashion use the string class function that returns an empty string class info object and down here we can invoke this function and we're gonna send it instead of you know what can't use the literal int and string but what we can send it are the boxed ints and box strings so we can box an int and give it a random number, 321, and then we'll box a string. And this string will uh, we'll say reflect, reflector. Nice. And close that off. And now we'll run this. And there you go, reflect on this, 321 reflector. And that is the first step in your introduction to reflection. In the next video I'm going to go over classes and the fun things you can do with classes with reflection. It's it's really exciting. Are you excited yet? Okay. Well, if you're not, take a break, drink some coffee, get excited. Or don't, whatever. Whatever you want to do. So go ahead, uh, send me an email at jim at smalltimeoutlaws if you Dot com if you want to rant or rave or tell me I'm doing reflection completely wrong which I might because there's a lot you can do with it it's really involved you definitely check out the documentation while you're going through these videos or after you go through these videos but uh, yeah leave some comments down below if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video